This year, I decided to do something different during the Tour de France. After all, I have watched this race for over 10 years now, but I have never placed a bet on a single stage of the Tour, let alone any bet at all in my life. So I thought that as somebody who has done a lot of fantasy sport, I thought, how hard can it be for me to translate my fantasy cycling results into good betting results? So here is my experiment to see how much money I can make by placing a one pound bet on one rider at every stage of the Tour de France 2023. The rules are pretty simple. I'm only allowed to put a one pound bet on one rider per stage and that bet must be placed before the stage starts. So here we go. I'm gonna now take you through all the odds for all 21 stages and we're going to see how much money I got at the end of this Tour de France. So to begin with, I started off stage one with one of the favorites, which was Matthew van der Poel at odds of nine to two, which would have returned me four pounds 50. He was one of the big favorites for this day. And I really believe that he would be winning a sprint at the end of it. At stage two, I decided that it was going to be a headwind on the climb and therefore some of the more pure sprinters who could climb a little bit would be able to hang on. And therefore I went for Mass Pedersen at odds of 16 to one. I thought this was pretty good value and I saw a lot of other people hyping him up for this stage. So that would have returned me 16 pounds. On stage three, I decided that I'd go for one of the big sprinters. There were lots of favorites coming into this, including Jasper Philipsen and Dylan Gronewegen, but I went for Fabio Jakobsen because he won a stage very early on in the Tour de France 2022. And I thought that he would certainly repeat this very early on, probably in the first week of the Tour. Uh, I got him at odds of three to one, which is a little bit longer odds than Jasper Philipsen was, so I thought this was slightly better value. And I then doubled down on this on stage four. I went for Jakobsen again after he didn't win on stage three, but he came in fourth place. I doubled down and got an odds of three to one again, so therefore that would have returned me three pounds. Stage five, and it was going to be the first sort of GC action day. I wasn't really too sure what to expect. It could have been a breakaway or one for the kind of uh, for the GC guys to fight out. And I expected a scenario where the GC riders were going to fight it out and therefore Pogaccio was going to win a sprint. So I picked him up at odds of five to two to return me two pounds 50. Stage six, and I believe that the final climb wasn't hard enough for big GC action, despite the fact that the Tourmalet was in this stage. So I went for a breakaway bet of Jack Haig, who looked very good during the Criterium de Dauphiné. And I got him at odds of 50 to one, which was my first sort of dabbling in longer breakaway odds. And is certainly something which I tried further along, uh, further along in this race as well. On stage seven, I decided to go for Caleb Ewan. He looked very fast during the sprints uh, earlier on in the week. And I thought that he would certainly be close to getting a win at some point in this tour. And I thought, why not for stage seven? He was at odds of 15 to four. So therefore that would have returned me three pounds and 75 pence. And then at stage eight, I decided to go for Wout Van Aert. Again, could have gone for a Philipson or a Mass Paterson, but I decided that Wout Van Aert was due for a stage win. He usually always gets one in the Tour de France, and I thought this stage seemed perfect for him. So I got picked him up at odds of seven to two, which would have got me three pounds 50. Stage nine, and I believed up the Puy de Dom, the steeper gradients would have suited Jonas, and I think that he was going to gain some more time on GC. So I went with him at odds of seven to two to return me three pounds and 50p just before the first rest day. And then on stage 10, the first day after the rest day, it was a bit of a lumpy affair, which could, in my opinion, have gone to some hardy sprinters who could have held on. And therefore, I saw Phillips in the odds of 50 to 1, and I believe that this was too good to pass up. So I went with him to return me 50 pounds, and that would really have turned around this whole kind of betting spree that I was on. Because at this point, I hadn't had a single victory. Stage 11, and I decided that Gronwegen was due a victory. And again, the same prophecy I thought that Philipson was bound to mess up at one of these points. And I thought Gronwegen was one of the people at slightly longer odds at six to one to return me six pounds. That seems like a better value pick than Philipson, who was only going to return me a little bit over one pound, perhaps. Stage 12 had seemed like a breakaway day, a few medium mountains in there. And I thought that this was a perfect stage for Massey Mahoric. I thought he was bound to win a stage in the tour at this point. So I went with Mahoric at 12 to one to return me 12 pounds. Stage 13, and I went with Tade Pigaccia. It was going now into some of the more mountainous terrain, and I thought that Pigaccia, after looking so good at Puy de Dom and dropping Jonas Vingegaard, this was going to be a stage which he was bound to win. So I went with him at 11 to 8 odds to return me £1.37p. Stage 14, and I doubled down on Pigaccia. We are now up, going up the Jouplan, and I felt that Pigaccia was looking really strong, and he was looking very good on this stage. 
So I managed to pick him up before the stage at odds of 4 to 1 to return me £4. Stage 15 seemed like a certain breakaway stage and I thought that the rider who looked really good during stage 14 at the start was Giulio Ciccone. He looked like he had diamonds in his legs. Really strong rider and I thought well he's going to be going for the mountains classification and there's a category 1 at the end so he'll probably try and win the stage. Stage 16 on the TT and I decided to go for Tade Pigaccia at odds of 6 to 5. It was either him or Jonas. It was a bit of a coin toss so I went with Pigaccia to return me £1.20p. Stage 17 and after the performance of Jonas in the time trial I decided to double down on him and went for went for him to win up the Col de la Luz. The Queen stage it seemed like a stage perfectly designed for him to do well. Stage 18 seemed like it was going to be an absolute nailed on sprint so therefore I thought well I'll be I thought Philipson's won so much to all this time I am going to pick him up finally at odds of 5-4 to four to return me uh, £1.25. Rain, uh, stage 19 and this has looked like an absolute certainty for a breakaway stage of between rulers and I thought that after the success of Kasper Asgreen in the stage before that Quickstep would get in the breakaway again with Raimi Cavagna maybe Asgreen as well but Cavagna was at odds of 40 to 1 and that seemed like a fantastic value and would hopefully turn around this kind of poor streak that I was on so at 40 to 1 he would have turned me 40 pounds stage 20 and one of the strongest climbers in the final week of racing was Felix Gal, who of course won up the Col de la Loz and I thought that he could certainly get in the, to a breakaway, make use of Chicone going for mountains points and then counter attack over the top of him and solo to victory. So I went with Felix Gal at odds of 10 to 1 to return me £10. And then finally we got to stage 21 on the Champs-Élysées and I thought that I would again go with Philipson because he didn't win last time when I put a bet on him so I thought well this is going to be the one where it's going to work gone at odds of 1 to 2 the lowest odds of the day so therefore it wasn't going to return me a much and it was only going to return me 50p and that is all 21 stages that I put a bet on and what we can conclude from this is that I didn't get a single stage correct which was so disappointing i really thought that i was going to at least get a handful of stages at least a gc in the sprint days and maybe get lucky with a breakaway day but what this has taught me is that firstly my fantasy cycling experience does not translate exactly into good betting results and definitely there is some things which i need to learn to try and pick the best sort of riders who are going to go for a day perhaps pick more sensible choices rather than ones which are more heart and gut picks but ones which are based more upon logic and form and so therefore we ended up going minus 21 pounds on this challenge which i set for myself but i am determined to perhaps do this again next year so be sure to drop a like and a subscribe down below and a comment if you think that i should do this again next year and also comment if you put if you would put any bets on the tour de france this year i would love to hear some success stories after all mine did not go very well so thank you very much for watching and all that is left to say is to stay safe out there and i'll see you in the next video